Welcome in to the best in true crime talk radio. This is True Crime Tuesday. I'm Tim Dennis. Beer City Bruiser is taking a much, much needed break. If you were not at WrestleCade this past weekend in North Carolina, well, one, you probably can't afford the high price of airline fare and hotel fare. I don't blame you. I wasn't there for the same reason. And two, um, well, you probably weren't a wrestling fan, and that's okay as well. Um, Beer City Bruiser will be back next week uh, for True Crime Tuesday. But in the meantime, by gosh, we got the next best thing. We got the co-hostess with the mostest. We got Mally Fox. Hi, Mally. Hello. It's good to have you back on, darling. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. I feel like because you were talking about him, I need like that music that's played when the wrestlers come down. Oh, yeah. Your entrance music. Yeah. Oh, we you sound like I'm all cool and stuff. I, I could have arranged that. I don't think I, I, you know what? I might have a, let me see here. Do I have a, I might have a theme. Let me see. Let me try here. Let me see. Okay. Let me see if this works. Um, <laughs> okay. This is my generic rock theme. Does that work for you? Yeah. Carl's okay. going, ah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, coming to the ring originally from Edina, Minnesota. I don't know if that's where you're from. Minnetonka, it's close okay. enough. Originally from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Now from the slums of Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> the one and only paranormal girl, Molly Fox. Slums of Detroit. I don't know. I, I didn't really have anything good there. I apologize for that. <laughs> Actually, Detroit was voted the best place to be right now. For what? A Lions fan? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I, coming I, back, baby. Coming back. Coming back. Coming back from what? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Detroit's a lot of fun. Uh, well, yeah, I feel like getting shot. I mean, it's it's a Stop. wonderful thing. Oh, okay, There's, I'm sorry. Oh, Minneapolis is much worse. Well, than yeah, <laughs> it's it's a great place if you love being uh, beat up by police. It's a great place. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, folks. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're gonna get hate mail now. I know I am, especially from the Minneapolis Police Board. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. No, we uh, we like to have fun with our cities, don't we? Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I, I like to kid. I like to kid. By the way, we are, our cities are, um, are tied together. Our football teams are tied together this weekend. I know it's, it's, uh, it's a uh, true crime Tuesday sports talk for a minute. Um, <laughs> should the Detroit Lions lose this weekend, the Vikings win this weekend, uh, Minnesota Vikings clinch the NFC North. Okay. Yeah. So. So go Lions. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, actually, I was I was rooting for the Lions uh, on, on Thanksgiving. I was hoping they'd beat Buffalo. You know what? Even though they're not like the best team out there, mm -hmm. they have diehard fans. I mean, they will. It, it's amazing how many people truly support the team, even though they know that the odds are they're probably going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know they had a they had a nice little three game win streak going into Thanksgiving, and when they mm -hmm. were going up against Buffalo, I thought, hey, you know what, they got a shot. They're at home. They're uh, you know they're the early game on Thanksgiving. It's either this or we're watching the dog show on the, <laughs> on Thanksgiving. By the way, did you and the Mister uh, Mister Mally Fox were you fighting over who was going to watch what? Uh, actually, no, football was on. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So I just talked to my mother in law about other stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> She kept telling them to hush it because they were yelling at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe uh, an iPad was snuck in and maybe you guys were watching the dog show. On, oh, uh, no. On I was in the no? kitchen eating cheese. So <laughs> Ooh, there you go. There you go. I always find the cheese platter. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't go wrong there. That's for sure. I know, right? That's for sure. How was your Thanksgiving, by the way? It was fabulous. Thank you. Very quiet, but it was fabulous. How was yours? Oh, very good. Um, uh, we we took uh, the majority of the Thanksgiving meal and threw it at the TV while the Vikings were playing. So, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a wonderful Thanksgiving. We saved a lot of uh, a lot of calories that way, and nobody gained weight. Ah, yeah, it was wonderful. Um, no, I kid. Uh, it was it was good. It was a good time, and uh, we got to teach the youngins on uh, what it means to be a Vikings fan, how to be uh, frustrated for most of the game. Right. Uh, the only thing that changed about how to become a Vikings fan is they won the game, which it was unexpected. 
Um, normally you end up losing the game. Then you go have a lot of dessert and you cry in your dessert. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that didn't happen this time. So my mother-in-law makes uh, individual, she makes the normal size pies. Mm-hmm. So what are they like nine inch or whatever? Yes. Yep. But, um, she makes, we get our own pie. Whoa. Really? So I just finished my pumpkin pie yesterday. You get your own pie. Yep. Derek gets a coconut cream pie and I got a pumpkin pie. I wouldn't know how to explain that at my Overeaters Anonymous meeting. <laughs> well, as I waddle into the Overeaters yeah. Anonymous. <laughs> By the way, I'll I, explain it. Yeah, I've broken every one or every number uh, of the, uh, I don't know what they call them, amendments or whatever. Um, uh-huh. uh, by the way, uh, as I'm eating my 14th slice of pie, um, yeah, I, by the way, I blew it. I blew the entire program this week. Uh, Mom made me my own pie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I always feel like that skit from you remember with Chris Farley when he dressed up as a girl at the mall and he's eating fries. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. you know, Becky or whatever name they named him, you know, yeah. about cutting back on fries, like, leave me alone, I'm hungry or something. Yeah. I always feel like that when I'm like leaning over my pie. Yeah. <laughs> leave me alone, I'm starving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, I, I don't blame you. I'd 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 be going at it, uh, going at that pie too. Um, yeah, I I I would I, I'll testify here on on tape uh, to my uh, cardiologist. I was pretty darn good this Thanksgiving. I uh, I cut back on everything. Wow, well, good for you. Yeah. I need to start cutting back. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> wow, thanks, mom. Um, yeah, I uh, yeah, I was a good boy. No, I didn't say you need to start cutting back. I said I need to start cutting. Oh, back. Oh, I thought you said you need to. I was no, like, whoa. Jimmy, like I would do that. Oh my god, that would be mean. Well, I'm I didn't not mean. I didn't know if it was tough love or what you were doing there. But, yeah. No. Mm, mm-hmm. It took me a second. I'm like, wait a second. Does he think I just said that? I, I did. I thought he, I was like, wow, a new side of Mally. No. Um, oh, okay. Well, I, I apologize. I, I didn't. I didn't know if that was you know a new tough love side of Mally coming out or, or what. But that's only when I'm hangry. <laughs> the tough side comes. Well, out. well, I don't know. You said you just finished your pie. I figured you wanted seconds. I didn't know whether to call the mother-in-law and pay her for another one or what. Uh. Are you a big fan of pumpkin pie? I am. Well, I like all pies except for I'm not a big fan of like berry pies. Really? But um, yeah. But uh, pumpkin, I love that and uh, pecan. Oh, those I love, are my two favorite. Yeah, I love pecan pie. Yeah, my mom makes like a bourbon pecan chocolate pie. Oh, good. Oh my god, it's like an orgasm in your mouth. It's delish. Wow. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of people asking for that on the button bar and <laughs> I, I'm not going to. Um, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, that sounds amazing. Um, mm-hmm. By the way, I saw on your Facebook, you went Nutella crazy. Uh, oh yeah. Sure. I'm going to start posting Nutella recipes every week. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I just, I mean, I love Nutella should sponsor me, but I love Nutella. Now tell people what what exactly the the recipe I'm talking about that you have oh, on your your. Uh, it was a Nutella stuffed French toast casserole, and it was to die for. It's actually quite easy to make, but I thought you know what, it's a holiday weekend. Everyone's got out of town guests and stuff. It's really easy to make. Uh, you can make it the night before, just refrigerate it, and then pop it in the oven. And like after like thirty minutes, you've got ooey goodness. I mean, it's so good. And in fact, I had people message me because they didn't want to go to my website and look at the recipe. <laughs> really, <laughs> so seriously? I ended up, I ended up just like sending it out in like this mass text. Like, here's the recipe. Do it. It was so good. And um, my kids, they're very picky and they loved it. Ariana went back for like three pieces. Wow. It's so, it is so good. It, it is, it is good. It, I recommend using brioche bread. Oh, oh, oh wow. So yeah. Instead of regular yeah. white bread. Yeah. Brioche. Brioche so. bread would be amazing with that. Yeah. 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 It's good. And a little, little uh, whipped cream. Add that. Oh, it's so good. So when do you whip your own cream or is it, is it uh, store-bought? 
store bought. I've tried whipped cream and mm -hmm. it's not, it doesn't turn out right. And I don't think I like sweet whipped cream. Yeah. And like the normal whipped cream, I don't think it is that sweet. Okay. So yeah, I just go for the store bought. Okay. Cool. It's easier. It it looked amazing. I almost jumped on a flight and came in and knocked on your door and just said, can I just have one serving? <laughs> it is so good. I'll tell you what, the next time I come to Minnesota and if I come to visit you and we do recording or whatever, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll make it. That would be amazing. That, yeah, that would be it yeah, is yeah. the easiest recipe to make. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was impressed. I, I, uh, I, I kept hitting the, the, the heart button on it, but it kept going on and off. I couldn't give it more than one heart. <laughs> I was that stupid over it at that time. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is. It is delicious. Yeah. 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 So now I got to figure out what to do for this week for Nutella. Oh. Yeah. The, the Nutella people ought to be sending you checks. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I just, I love it. And I know the rainforest, all that stuff, palm oil. I don't care. Yeah, when it's melting in your mouth. Yeah. It's those, delish. Those trees will grow back. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That was that was mighty callous of me, I know, but hey, don't grow back. <laughs> we'll all be dead by the time you know we don't have oxygen on this planet. Yeah. <sighs> Anywho, big yeah. show today, Mally. Uh, on True Crime Tuesday today, we're doing a uh, another edition of Rip from the Headlines. Uh, as we know, the uh, the holiday, as we've been talking about, the holiday went uh, <laughs> by, and a lot of us were stuffing our faces and and paying attention to things like parades and football games and dog shows and. Uh, lots of uh, programming to take our minds off of things. Meanwhile, the evil got eviler out there, and uh, we're, we're committing crimes. And uh, a lot of stuff went uh, by the wayside that uh, we weren't paying attention to, so we figured we'd catch up on that. And, of course, we've got dumb crime, stupid criminals in the second part of the program. So Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's get to it, shall we? Let's remind you about a couple of things that went on that you probably heard about, but uh, we'll recap them as well. Uh, you probably heard, Mally, about the Virginia Walmart shooting. Yes, I did. Yeah. A very, oh, sad. Very sad story indeed. Six employees and a shooter are dead uh, after a manager reportedly opened fire in a break room. Uh, we go to Chesapeake, Virginia, where seven people, including the suspect, are dead and many more injured after a man reportedly opened fire at a Walmart on Tuesday night, on Wednesday, November 23rd, Chesapeake Police Chief Mark Solsky spoke at a press conference and shared details about the shooting. According to Solsky, the department's 911 dispatch center received the first call at 10, 12 p.m. And officers arrived at the Walmart on Sam's Circle within two minutes. Chesapeake police officers went inside the store at 10, 16 p.m. And the store was declared safe by 11, 20 p.m. Uh, Solsky said six people were killed and the shooter likely died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Four victims remain hospitalized. Chesapeake police identified the suspect as 31-year-old Andre Bing. He was reportedly armed with a handgun and had multiple magazines on his person. The SWAT team conducted a search at the, suspect's gun, or at the suspected gunman's home, and that scene was cleared. Solsky does not believe that there is a threat to the public. The suspect was reportedly an employee at Walmart and used a pistol in the shooting, but the man's motive remains unclear at the time. According to Chesapeake police, three people, including the shooter, were found dead in the break room, while one other person was deceased at the front of the store. Three other victims died at the hospital from their injuries. Police said at least six additional victims were taken to area hospitals and one remains in critical condition, WAVY TV. Yes, it's Wavy TV. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sometimes I laugh at the uh, call signs for uh, different TV and radio stations. Uh, report that uh, Walmart confirmed Bing worked there as the overnight team lead. He has reportedly been employed by Walmart since 2010. An employee at the Walmart told ABC News that he suspects or that the suspect was her manager and he had just opened the door and just opened fire without any explanation. Uh, she shared he wasn't aiming at anybody specifically. He just literally started shooting throughout the entire break room. And I watched multiple people just drop down to the floor, whether they were trying to duck for cover or whether they were trying to duck for cover or they were hit. It sounds like an absolute nightmare, uh, Mally. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to tell you, you know, when and, and I kind of get the idea of the scene just from description. But, you know, we all had jobs and we were uh, 
when we were, well, most of us did, when we were teenagers or, or early adults, young adults. Mm -hmm. um, when I was a young, young adult uh, in, in high school, I had a job at Chuck E. Cheese, okay? And, and we had this break room. You had to go up a really narrow, high staircase, and there was absolutely nowhere to run. So when I heard about this shooting, I just imagined the break room at Chuck E. Cheese where there was absolutely nowhere to go. It was on the second story uh, above the dish room, okay? Okay. So if someone would have came up with a gun, with a pistol, <clears throat> like, say, our manager, and would have come in, we had, like, little lockers, and then there was just a little like a little counter, like a little lunch counter that wrapped around two walls and stools where you could sit and eat your lunch, but your back was to the door. How easy it would have been just to be picked off. I, yep. I imagine it just like the, the scene of this, this Walmart shooting and how easy it would have been for somebody just to walk in and pick you off and be done. Yeah. Did you see the, the story where they were interviewing one of the employees and she came face to face with them and he told her to go home? Really? Yeah. Before he started, I don't know if he had already been shooting or if he was about to, but she, she came face to face with him and he told her to go home. She had just started like a week ago. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Wow. I, you know, that's one of those things where you, you wonder why, you know, if he was just going to go up and pick off random employees, mm -hmm. why would he tell that one person just go home? Maybe he just did. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she was super nice to him or something. I don't know. Wow. I don't know. But yeah, he just told her to go on home. Unbelievable. Wow. Mm -hmm. There's something in the water in Virginia, Mel. Um, our next story has to do with an ex-Virginia state trooper who was shot dead after kidnapping a teen and murdering her family. He ended up driving all the way to Riverside, California. Oh, I didn't hear that story. To do this, yeah. Uh, this just happened, I believe, a day or two ago. A former Virginia State uh, trooper uh, allegedly kidnapped a California teenage girl. He had been catfishing online after murdering her family. This, according to police, authorities say 28-year-old Austin Lee Edwards drove more than 2,500 miles across the country to Riverside to meet the teen on Friday. Uh, Edwards then allegedly killed the girl's grandparents and mom set fire to their home and took off with the victim. Deputies from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department tracked down Edwards and fatally shot him later that day during a shootout. That according to law enforcement, the juvenile victim who was found with Edwards was unharmed and taken into protective custody by the River County or I'm sorry, the Riverside County Department of Public social services edwards from north chesterfield virginia met the girl online and obtained her personal information by passing himself off as someone else in a practice commonly known as catfishing the riverside police department said in a press release uh, it's unclear how long the two were communicating the shocking incident began unfolding just after 11 a.m on friday when police in riverside got a call for a welfare check concerning a young woman who appeared distressed when getting into a red Kia Soul uh, in the 11200 block of Price Court. While officers were responding, dispatchers were then alerted to smoke and a possible fire a few houses away from where police were called for the welfare check. Uh, the Riverside Fire Department discovered uh, three adults lying in front in the front entryway and took them outside where first responders determined they were victims of an apparent homicide. That had to be a nightmare to walk into oh, as well. That poor girl. Yeah. Investigators later determined that the young woman uh, described in the initial welfare call had lived at the house where the three people were found dead. Police said the bodies found in the scorched Riverside home were identified as the abducted teens, grandparents and mother. 69-year-old Mark Winnick, his wife Sherry Winnick, who is 65, and their 38-year-old daughter Brooke Winnick. Uh, police have not revealed their causes of death as of Monday, but they believe Edwards traveled across the country, parked his car in a neighbor's driveway, walked to the teen's home, and killed her family before leaving with the girl. The cause of the fire was under investigation, but it appeared to have been intentionally ignited 
Police said it is unclear if the grandparents and mother were killed before the fire was allegedly set. Riverside authorities distributed a description of Edwards' car to law enforcement agencies, and several hours later, police located the car with Edwards and the teenager in Kelso in San Bernardino County. Edwards fired gunshots and was killed by deputies who returned fire, according to police. Edwards was hired by the Virginia State Police and entered the police academy on July 6th of 2021. He graduated as a trooper on January 21st of 2022 and was assigned to Enrico County uh, within the agency's Richmond Division until his resignation on October 28th. Edwards has also worked for the Washington County Sheriff's Department in Virginia, according to authorities in California. Uh, Riverside Police Chief Larry Gonzalez called the case yet another horrific reminder of the predators existing online who prey on our children. During a vigil held Saturday, friends and neighbors described the Winnicks as a caring and loving family who were deeply involved in their community. Ron Smith said, you can't ask for a better friend than Mark. Mark Winnick's friend of 30 years, uh, Ron Smith was a friend of uh, Mark Winnick for 30 years, told the Mercury News, he said, there's going to be a hole in my heart that's going to be hard to fill. Pretty disturbing. So scary. Yeah, pretty disturbing now. I, I got to I gotta wonder, you know, it's it's scary just to have someone catfishing you one, but then to have someone who's a member of law enforcement doing it. I mean, talk about the tools that are available to right. to be able to do that. I mean, that's that's just frightening. Yeah, yeah, that that is indeed. Uh, let's uh, let's move on. You, you know, the the other interesting story that was out there last week that was well known was the. The story about the uh, the four students in the University of Idaho that were murdered. Oh, yeah. I've been all over that. Yeah. And interestingly enough, uh, over the weekend and into this, this week, uh, 911 calls have surged as the University of Idaho murders have left the community on edge. In fact, a little bit too on edge. Uh, police in the college town home, uh, home to the University of Idaho, have been inundated with calls from a community still gripped by fear over a grisly quadruple homicide that has not been solved. As weary students are returning to campus from their Thanksgiving break, the Moscow Police Department has received 78 calls of unusual circumstances, that's in quotes, and 36 welfare requests or welfare check requests since November 13th, the day after students, 21 year old uh, Madison Mogan. Um, 20-year-old Zana Kernodal, pardon me, I might uh, screw these names up a little bit here. I I don't read for a living, Mally. I don't don't know if you know that or not. Uh, 20-year-old Ethan Chapin and 21-year-old Kaylee Gonzalez, is it Gonzalez, I believe, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Uh, were stabbed to death in their sleep in an off-campus home. Uh, the agency said Sunday for comparison, the police department has received 70 unusual circumstances calls and just 18 welfare check requests in the entire month of October. So uh, that's, that's, that's up quite a bit over, uh, over what they normally receive. Uh, We understand that there's a sense of fear in our community. Cops have acknowledged there. Uh, Local, state, and federal investigators working the case are in the process of reviewing 488 digital submissions, including photo and video tips that have been delivered to an FBI link by members of the public. Students are scheduled to return to the UI campus on Monday. That would be uh, today as we're recording this. But it remains unclear how many of them would resume in-person learning for the last two weeks of classes before winter break. Fearing a killer on the loose, many students left campus early in the wake of the murders, and University of Idaho President C. Scott Green uh, said last week that some students did not plan to return to campus until police had made an arrest in the case. Um, I don't know. Do you think it's going to be some time before they find find who it is? Um, I mean, a lot of people are saying it's the neighbor guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you know, I, I in a town that small, I can't imagine it'll take that long, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, C. Scott Green also 
went on to say in a statement, as such, faculty have been asked to prepare in-person teaching and remote learning options so that each student can choose their method of engagement for the final two weeks of the semester. University of Idaho is hand, or hosting a, a candlelight vigil Wednesday to honor the murder victims. Police preview. Now, see, with that scenario, Mally, mm-hmm. if it's going to draw out the actual killer, I would think that would be it right there because they would want to see their work. Oh, yeah. Well, don't they say that a lot of um, killers return to the scene of the crime? Yes. And and they, they tend to want to admire what they've done. Right. Right. Yeah. So I would think that they might be lingering at that scene. Yeah. But it's just, I mean, it was so violent. I mean, with stabbing, you think it's more personal than a gun. A gun's kind of like, you know, bang, bang. And you... you you know what I mean? But a knife, it's like you are purposely, I mean, it's so violent and it takes a lot of work. It is. Yeah. And it's very, you know? it's very personal and there's a lot of anger behind it too. Yeah. Uh, like Mally mentioned, um, th- there's a knife involved in this. Police previously said they believe the killings of the four students were targeted and isolated and they have not ruled out the possibility that there were multiple attackers in this case. So far, no suspects have been named. The murder weapon, believed to be a fixed blade knife, has not been recovered. Uh, Steve Gonzalez, the father of Kaylee Gonzalez, told Fox News Saturday he has not received any updates on the investigation from law enforcement since before Thanksgiving Day. They're just kind of telling me that they can't tell me much, which is frustrating to me because I've been very trustworthy, he went on to say. Um, Idaho State Police Communications Director Aaron Snell explained that investigators have been tight-lipped to avoid spreading more fear and suspicion in the community, which is already on edge and swarming with rumors. Uh, Meanwhile, University of Idaho alum Carrie Allorn uh, has raised more than $19,000 to buy and distribute birdie personal alarms to students to make them feel safer on campus. Uh, She told KTVB7, it's so scary, I'm not even up there. I can't imagine what it's like for the people that are living there. Senior Megan Lolly told the station that she's looking forward to getting her alarm so that she could protect herself. It feels dangerous to be up there right now, she said. I I felt scared for the last week. Um, I don't blame some of the students, Mal, for feeling uh, particularly unsafe, but at the same time, Incidents of this caliber are very rare, Mm -hmm. even though that the the suspect or suspects in this case are still on the loose. It seems to me, being that these these four people were friends, Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that that it was a more targeted incident. Yeah. Could you imagine the girls that were downstairs? Like what if what they feel. I mean, do they have like survivor's guilt because the four people above them, you know, were brutally murdered or, you know what I mean? Just yeah. like that could have been them as well. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I, I think there's gotta be some survivor's guilt. Um, mm-hmm. not only that, but are they, they gotta feel like, are they next? Right. Well, that too. Yeah. Like, like, are they, you know, personal. yeah. Or are they, or, or maybe do they know who it was? You know, yeah. are they sitting on something? Do they do they know something or think they know something? I mm-hmm. mean, you got to think there's a, a range of emotions that are going on with these two girls, too. Yeah. 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 Uh, let's move on. Uh, there's an Ohio man. This is an interesting story. OK, so we were talking football earlier, right? Uh-huh. And we talk about the range of emotions that go on with football. Obviously, there might have been yelling at the screen by Mr. Mr. Fox earlier Uh uh, uh, at the Lions game. Uh, uh, has there ever been a firearm brandished at a Lions game? <laughs> uh, not to my knowledge. Okay. <laughs> they won't even let us bring our purses in. <laughs> wow. Well, how about at the house there? I mean, obviously you can bring a, you know, you can bring your purse into the house, but uh, has it ever gotten so heated at the house between relatives that a, uh, that a, a gun has been brandished there at the house over a Lions game? I'm happy to say no. Okay, good, good, very good. <laughs> Um, it turns out that one man in Ohio has been sentenced for shooting his relative at a Super Bowl party who said the wrong things. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I I just don't know what you would say that would be wrong at a Super Bowl party, especially in Ohio. It's not mm-hmm. like Clevelanders. Oh, wait, Cincinnati was in it. Never mind. <laughs> 
A 75-year-old man who was recently sentenced to prison for fatally shooting his relative during a Super Bowl party earlier this year. 75? He should know better. Well, he has good aim for being (laughs) 75. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, I got to think, you know, for, for... 75 he was he was not only putting it between the eyes but between the goal posts Mally. <laughs> yep. yeah sorry i'm laughing and i shouldn't this no, is a very I, serious I, it's, matter it's a serious matter yeah he performed a lot better than the Bengals that day <laughs> <clears throat> according to a news release from the uniontown police department on the evening of sunday february 13th officers responded to a home on Starlight Circle, uh, to a report of a shooting at the scene. Uh, Officers reportedly found the suspect, Alfred Lee Johnson, outside of the residence. Much like the Bengals, he had to cool down. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Uh, The victim, 41-year-old Nicholas, I believe it's Ustike, had been shot in the face and the stomach. (laughs) Ah. The face and the stomach, Mal. Yeah, that, oh. Yeah. Oh. Evidently, he was reenacting where Joe Mixon was mainly hitting his receivers. <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> uh, police. It was, sorry, it wasn't, it was, uh, I got the quarterback's name wrong. Forgive me, Bengals fans. Uh, Police said the victim was transported to Akron City Hospital, where he was later pronounced deceased. According oh. to WJW, Johnson confessed to shooting the victim with a 45 caliber pistol. Johnson reportedly said that his relatives said the wrong things. Like what? It's Joe Burrow, by the way, not Joe Mixon. I'm going to get emails if I don't correct that. Joe Burrow should be hitting him on the hands, not the face and the stomach. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> like what would you say what wrong things would you say yeah go other team <laughs> <laughs> uh, other people at the Super Bowl party allegedly heard the gunshots but did not see the shooting so were they the only two in the room I guess I don't know uh, Johnson was convicted the week of November 14th and sentenced to 15 years to life Oh, he's going to die in prison. Probably. Uh, With an additional three-year sentence for a firearm charge. Plus, he's got to watch Bengals games for the rest of his life. (laughs) (laughs) So there you go. I know it's not dumb crime, stupid criminals, but you got to throw that little, you know. Uh, We go to Florida, Mel, but this is not a dumb crime, stupid criminal story. Instead, this is incredibly sad. Um, A Florida man arrested for allegedly killing his missing wife also got rid of her body amid the divorce. He's been caught. Now he's going to be sentenced. We go to Broward County, Florida, where a 36-year-old man was taken into custody on suspicion of killing his missing wife and transporting her body to another location. Uh This is an interesting name. 39-year-old Mimose Dolcio was last seen November 10th at her home in unincorporated Central Broward and reported missing two days later on November 12th. The Broward County Sheriff's Office began investigating her disappearance, and several days later, investigators reported discovering her body in a wooded area in Miami-Dade County. This according to NBC Miami. Dolcio's husband, Joe Pacheco, Uh, was taken into custody in Miami-Dade County and later transferred to Broward County. Dolcio's sister told NBC Miami Dolcio and Pacheco were in the midst of a messy divorce, according to the Broward County Sheriff's Department, or or office rather. Uh, Investigators searched Pacheco and Dolcio's home and vehicle and reportedly found evidence that suggested Dolcio had been murdered in the couple's home and that her body had been transported in the couple's shared vehicle and disposed of in an unknown location. Uh, Pacheco is being held currently in the Broward County Jail for second-degree murder. Why, if you're going through divorce, do you kill your significant other because you will be the first one that the finger's pointed to? You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a, that's a stupid move. I, I'm not, not condoning anything by obviously. Right. Obviously. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, we've got, uh, we've got some, some more stories ripped from the headlines here on today's uh, True Crime Tuesday. A main man allegedly killed his brother whose body or was badly mutilated and was found in a trailer. We'll go to Pennsylvania and get an update on a story about a man who gets 20 years for torturing his mom to death and then took nearly 300 selfies with her body. Oh, that's wrong. Gruesome at that. A 19-year-old New York man allegedly fatally shot his mother and her boyfriend. We'll tell you about that when we come back. And a woman's body is found in a search for a missing Arizona kayaker. We'll tell you about that. We've, they found her body in, uh, in Mexico. So uh, more of that and much, much more. It's Ripped from the Headlines with Mally Fox right here on True Crime Tuesday. Welcome back to True Crime Tuesday. It's a special edition of True Crime Tuesday. It's ripped from the headlines. Our guest co-host today is Mally Fox. Beer City Bruiser is on vacation after a rough weekend there at Wrestlecade in uh, in North Carolina, which actually is a be- beautiful convention. If you're at Wrestlecade this weekend, uh, you saw quite a few stars out there uh, from the wrestling world. And uh, you had yourself a good time. Bruiser had a good time, too. But uh, he had a little long schedule. He had a lot of, a lot of things going on there. And uh, he'll tell us all about it when he's back next week. Um, by the way, Mally, thank you so much for doing the program today. We, we appreciate you. It is my pleasure. I love doing this. Well, we love having you here. We love having you here. Uh, this story, Mally, is disturbing to say the least. A Maine man, not our Maine man, but a man in Maine... <laughs> Uh, allegedly killed his brother, uh, whose badly mutilated body was found in a trailer. Oh, geez. I didn't know they had trailers in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you hear Maine and you think lush foliage and big expensive uh-huh. cottages. and. I always think of like Stephen King movies, because don't they take place in Maine? Yeah, a lot of them. Or is it Massachusetts or Maine? I think it's Maine because they've got that accent. Like, they all have that accent. It's like some coastal town. True. And they're always fishing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I always get confused on that stuff. Believe it or not, there's a Poland, Maine. There's a what? A Poland, Maine. Oh, okay. You know, like... I thought you said a pole, like P-O-L-E, and then in Maine. No, no, and I was no. like, what? Po- Poland? <laughs> like, Poland? Gotcha. Like, where my, my some of my relatives come from? Poland? Gotcha. Okay. And Maine. Gotcha. Yeah. Poland is in Polak jokes in Maine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Best way to I'm put it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Got it. There you go. <laughs> I, which I did not know that either. Uh, a 34-year-old man who allegedly believed he was the Terminator stands oh, accused geez. of killing his older brother. Oh, dear <laughs> God. Really? Maybe I should have saved this for dumb crime, stupid criminals. Oh, did he do like that walk? That the Terminator kind of does? He did this. Yeah, he probably marched along (laughs) to this song right here. (laughs) That's probably what happened. Uh, He said he was the Terminator and he stands accused of killing his oldest brother. The, I believe it's Androscoggin County Sheriff's Office said deputies responded to a mobile home on Thursday, November 24th. At the scene, they reportedly found the deceased victim. According to the sheriff's office, Justin Butterfield. Sounds like a Terminator name if I've ever heard it. (laughs) Butterfield, far from the Terminator name. My name is Butterfield. (laughs) Butterfield! Who lived in the home with the victim, was identified as the primary suspect. After Butterfield was... (laughs) He sounds like a butler. (laughs) May I get you something, sir? My name is Butterfield. Sounds like a Harry Potter character. He does, doesn't he? Butterfield, the wizard who couldn't get his (laughs) wand up. After Butterfield was placed into custody, a neighbor told the Sun Journal that the suspect sat on the stairs, speckled with blood, smiling and laughing to himself. Now that sounds like a Terminator. Ugh. Yeah. Sounds a little insanity. Yeah, it does. Yeah. We'll we'll fade the Terminator music. Was he like on meth or something? 
I, I Is this guy on drugs? Sounds like it. Uh, authorities did not disclose the victim's name, but family friends reportedly said the victim was the suspect's older brother, or oldest brother, rather. Uh, neighbors also told the Sun Journal that they believe Butterfield suffers from mental illness. Well, you, you got that kind of oh, okay. right there, Mel. And police were often called the Butterfield's home for various disturbances. Uh, the body of Butterfield's brother has allegedly been badly mutilated. The sheriff's office said Butterfield was charged with murder and is being held at the Androscoggin uh, County Jail. Prior to the alleged killing, Butterfield is being investigated for reportedly bursting into his ex-girlfriend's home. It sounded a lot like this. I don't know. Um... According to the Sun Journal, Butterfield and his ex-girlfriend share a son, and she has custody of his daughter. Now, obviously, he can't think he's a Terminator if he's spawned life. <laughs> right? Well, maybe he gets to pick and choose kind of the rules of being the Terminator. <laughs> I am not the Terminator, Mally. I'm a Sperminator. <laughs> What? There's your next T-shirt, Sperminator. The Sperminator. <laughs> How do you... I don't know. The delusion can only go so far. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't, you can't be a... I don't know. I digress. Uh, we'll go on to Pennsylvania, where a man reportedly... We, this is a follow-up to a story we covered a while back. A Pennsylvania man reportedly gets 20 years for torturing his mom to death taking nearly 300 selfies with her body. You may remember this story from uh, a couple of months ago. 33-year-old man was reported, uh, who reportedly beat his mother to death in 2019 and took pictures with her body was sentenced uh, this week, or last week rather, to uh, 20 years in prison as part of a plea deal. On September 2nd of 2019, South Fayette Police Department officials uh, conducted a welfare check at one, 172 Old Archer Drive and found a 67-year-old woman deceased inside. Her cause of death was not immediately apparent. South Fayette uh, Police requested assistance from the Allegheny County Police Department Homicide Unit, who then took over the investigation. The Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office performed an autopsy and determined the victim died from blunt force trauma and her manner of death was homicide. Officers later arrested the victim's son, David Sumney, for receiving stolen or property after investigators found his mother's jewelry in his possession. He was later charged with criminal homicide, robbery, theft, and abuse of a corpse. The victim was identified as Margaret Sumney. KDKA TV reported David Sumney pleaded guilty to third degree murder, but his family reportedly wanted a judge to rid or get rid of a plea deal and have him stand trial for first degree murder. According to the Daily Beast, David Sumney tortured his mother and left her body in a bathroom. He then reportedly took 277 photos and selfies at the scene. Obviously couldn't get the right angle. I guess, right? Uh, KDKA reports one selfie included him with a thumbs up. Uh, Jesus. And another with blood all over his face. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Uh, David's cousin Margot reportedly called him the epitome of pure evil in court. I think that's putting it mildly. Mm -hmm. His half-sister Ellen reportedly said, you broke her back, you paralyzed our mother, and then you just beat her and beat her. The blood was splattered along the walls. But I think the sickest part is the pictures, the 277 pictures. You only take pictures if you want to go back and see what you did. David reportedly told the judge in court, I cannot believe I would let myself get in such a state where I could do something so bad and so horrible. I can't believe I did or what I did that I killed my own mother. Uh, David Sumney reportedly has a history with violence. In July of 2019, he reportedly waterboarded his girlfriend in a hotel room, Mally. Good God. Yeah. I think uh, first degree murder is probably too good for him. Yeah. He needs to be locked up and not let out ever. Yeah. I say whatever he's done to other people, you do it twice as hard to him. Oh. That's that's just fair justice. That's scary. There, are, It's scary to know that there are people out there like that. And he's not just the only one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. We'll move on. We go to Schenectady, New York, where a 19-year-old New York man 
allegedly fatally shot his mother and her boyfriend. Uh, the story here is that uh, this 19-year-old man was arrested and charged after fatally shooting his mother and her partner. According to a news release from the New York, New York State Police, on the afternoon of November 22nd, state troopers and the Schenectady County Sheriff's deputies responded to a home on Reynolds Road in Princeton, or Princetown, rather, I'm not Princeton, uh, to perform a welfare check of a person who did not show up for work. At the scene, the authorities reportedly found the bodies of 61-year-old William Hor- Horwedel, I believe, and 60-year-old Alicia Wadsworth. Police said the victims died from gunshot wounds. Wadsworth's son, Nicholas Fiebke, was reportedly taken into custody for questioning. According to police, he was charged with two counts of second-degree murder. Horwedel, the male victim, uh, was reportedly the father of two state troopers. Oh. Yeah. Uh, He and Wadsworth were in a long-term relationship and lived together. Police did not disclose the motive. Fiebke remains held without bail at the Schenectady County Jail. That's kind of a weird twist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we go to Mexico, where a woman's body was found in the search for missing Arizona kayakers. Uh, search and rescue crews have located the body of an Arizona woman who vanished along with her husband while kayaking in Mexico on Thanksgiving. Flagstaff residents Corey Allen and his wife, I believe it's uh, Yan Su Kim, were on the water near Rocky Point with their daughter at about 1 p.m. on Thursday when strong gusts of wind picked up, according to a GoFundMe page, to help uh, find the couple. Allen took his daughter to the shore and went back to look for his wife, according to the fundraiser's organizer, Lisa Amick, uh, who said both people disappeared. On Sunday, Mexican Navy officials announced that the body of a woman matching Yan Su's description was located near the Mayan Palace Hotel. Uh, according to the Arizona Republic, which is a newspaper out there. Uh, after days of search and rescue efforts, the tragic passing of Yansu was confirmed. The search, the search for Corey continues. Northern Arizona University President Cruz Rivera said in a tweet on Monday, Yansu, who had a Ph.D. in forestry from Oregon State University, was a professor of ecological, e- e- uh, almost said ecological economics, <laughs> which is not the right syllable or emphasis on that syllable. Uh, ecological economics, there we go, Mally, uh, at NAU's School of Forestry, of which she has the executive or was the executive director, according to her LinkedIn profile. Uh, Puerto Penasco, or, or Penasco, I'm not quite sure which one, Mayor uh, Jorge Pivic Carrillo told local authorities to ramp up the search for Alan, who is a real estate agent. We appreciate the support of the volunteers who have come forward to help, in addition to private businesses and groups of U.S. residents who have provided support to continue the search efforts. The Civil Protection and Firefighters in Puerto Penasco said in a statement, the couple's daughter, who is a minor, has been handed over to relatives who traveled to the scene, according to the paper. They are also survived by another teenage child this according to arizona family uh cory and yan su are valuable members of the flagstaff community longtime friends shelly St- uh, thomas told fox 10 they're amazing friends and wonderful parents to two exceptional kids we are praying that they are found alive and able to be brought back to their kids who love them and depend on them she added another friend uh bryn defusco uh, described the couple to arizona family as a lovely and warm and engaging couple uh she added fearfully or tearfully rather uh the kids i mean obviously that was my first thought how are the kids going to be how altered their lives will be in the event that their parents aren't found oh those poor children yeah yeah and a sad story indeed uh and the last story today on uh, ripped from the headlines is an unusual one indeed, Mally. You know, there's been a lot of talk of, of the amount of drugs and the huge amount of seizures that have happened uh, recently. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a couple of big heroin busts, a couple of big cocaine busts recently that have been announced uh, over the last few months, the end of summer, beginning of fall. This one, police claim they took down a cocaine super cartel. Guess how many tons of drugs they, they picked up? I'm talking tons here, Mally. 
I could not even imagine. Take one guess. Just one guess. Give me a number. 50. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm 50. I'm 50. <laughs> um, that's a little high. You're shooting a little okay. high there. Well, you said. I know. I know. I did. <laughs> it was actually 33 tons of drugs. Oh, that's that's still huge. We'll go. We'll, right. we'll put some perspective behind it here in this story. Uh, police in six countries have teamed six countries. Imagine that have teamed up to take down a super cartel said to be controlling a third of Europe's cocaine trade. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, leading to dozens of arrests and large scale drug seizures. The European Union Crime Agency announced on Monday, Europol said 49 suspects have been cuffed during Operation Desert Light with the latest series of raids across Europe in the Euro United Arab Emirates taking place between November 8th and 19th. The agency said police forces involved in the investigation targeted both the command and control center and the logistical drugs trafficking infrastructure in Europe. Over 33 tons of drugs were confiscated in Spain, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, and the UAE with the support of Europol. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration also played a role in bringing down the cartel, which was also involved in money laundering, Europol said. The scale of cocaine importation into Europe under the suspect's control and command was massive, Europol said, adding that the suspects used encrypted com uh, communications to organize drug shipments. The map I'm looking at is completely, uh, it just, it pulls you over, Mally, as to as where things were moving. Uh -huh. uh, the Netherlands was the country where most of the arrests were made, with 14 suspects arrested in 2021. Europol said six high-value targets were arrested in Dubai. I thought you could be killed in Dubai for importing drugs. You know what? I thought so, too. Yeah. Weird. Uh, Dutch authorities said one of the suspects arrested in Dubai allegedly imported thousands of pounds of cocaine into the Netherlands in 2020 and 2021, the 37 year old suspected drug lord with both Dutch and Moroccan nationality is also being prosecuted for laundering large amounts of money and possession of firearms. Police started investigating him after investigators cracked the encrypted messaging service Sky ECC, which is popular with criminals. A 40-year-old Dutch Bosnian citizen is also arrested in Dubai following an investigation based on intercepted sky messages. According to the uh, Dutch police, he is suspected of importing into Europe cocaine and raw materials for the production of amphetamines. Spain's civil guard, they got a civil guard too. Interesting. Uh, which took part in the joint investigation, stated that the leader of the cartel has been identified as a British citizen who fled Spain to avoid being arrested and relocated to Dubai from where he continued directing and coordinating the criminal activities of the drug trafficking organization. This sounds like a brand new miniseries, uh, Mal. That's what I was thinking. Like, I could picture this being a movie or something. Yeah. Uh, Spanish law enforcement said the drugs were being supplied to the cartel by a Panamanian citizen also living in Dubai. Boy, there's a lot of stuff happening in Dubai. Mm. That's for sure. Um, yeah. More than, get this, 214 tons of cocaine were seized in Europe in 2020. <sighs> That's all. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of booger sugar. <laughs> I've never heard it called that before. That's a 70s term. <laughs> I don't remember what movie I saw when I was a kid that called it Boger Sugar. Uh, a 6% increase from the previous year. So that's just one year. <laughs> There's a lot of people running around with a lot of energy somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and experts from the European Monitoring Center for Drugs and Drug Addiction believe that amount could reach 330 tons by the end of 2022. Jesus. I wonder there's a lot of skinny people in Europe. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's, uh, we got to have new weight loss plans over here. I mean, Nutrisystem, go screw yourself. We got cocaine problems. We, <laughs> cocaine. That's right. Eric Clapton was onto something or on something, one or the other. 
oh, it's that time where we have to lighten things up and we don't mean our weight by using illegal substances. It's time now for us to switch gears. It's time now for dumb crimes and stupid criminals. It's, it's Crayon News Story Time. What happened with this dude, Christ Bear? I heard he uh, cut his penis off and then jumped off a balcony. Suspect pulls gun from butt, shoots twice at Denver police. What is your emergency? I need help. And what's the problem? I was too high. You're too high? Yeah. It's that time of the program, folks, where we dig into the dumb stuff, the stupid stuff. And, and speaking of dumb and stupid, Mallory, this is dumb and stupid in a different kind of way. I don't know if you heard about this or not, but I was sitting down watching my Sunday football as opposed to the football on the other times and days of the week. <laughs> right. And they had a story on uh, Sunday where they said that Odell Beckham Jr., which every team that's competing for a Super Bowl ring this year, uh, wants this wide receiver, this this free agent, free agent wide receiver, um, everybody from the Cowboys to the Vikings to the 49ers to Miami to uh, there's a handful of teams, the Cowboys. Everybody wants this this uh, free agent wide receiver, Odell Beckham Jr. He played for the Rams last year, got him to a Super Bowl, got him to win it. Um, he's on a plane and he's a little tired. So I, I from the way I gather the story and we'll find out more about it, I don't know if he shut his eyes and he was unresponsive to a, a flight attendant or what. Okay. But the situation gets out of control. And they have everybody exit the plane. <laughs> um, here's what happened. So okay. Odell gives his side of the story, or at, at least his, his attorney explains his side of the story. Uh -huh. Odell Beckham Jr.'s attorney is speaking out following Sunday's plane incident in which the free agent wide receiver was removed from a Miami flight bound for Los Angeles, calling the ordeal unnecessary. Uh, in a statement obtained by NFL Network's Ian Rappaport, Daniel Deval I believe it's Devilliers, it may be, uh, detailed his client's apparent series of events, which began Sunday morning when Beckham boarded a flight in Miami without any problems. The flight was delayed after boarding and prior to takeoff. Mr. Beckham fell asleep with his blanket over his head, which is his normal practice for long flights. He was awakened and told that the plane was back at the gate and that he needed to get off the plane because he did not put his seatbelt on when asked. Oh. Okay. He responded that he was asleep and that he would put his seatbelt on at that time, the statement read. Um, Beckham was then informed that it was too late and that either he would have to get off the plane or everyone would have to deplane. Uh, De Villiers then uh, claimed that an overzealous flight attendant forced everyone off the plane instead of allowing Beckham to put his seatbelt back on. Uh, De Villiers uh, continued that at no time was Mr. Beckham disruptive or combative and how the 30-year-old wideout was willing to comply with the seatbelt requirement. Beckham, who is set to kick off a series of free agency visits this week, was not detained nor cited in the incident, according to NFL Network. The Miami-Dade Police Department said Sunday officers were dispatched to a medical emergency after Beckham was reported to be in and out of consciousness, is the quote here, uh, fearing that Mr. Beckham was seriously ill and that his condition would worsen through the expected five-hour flight, the attendants called for police and fire rescue. <laughs> uh, police said in a statement, upon the officer's arrival, the flight crew asked Mr. Beckham several times to exit the aircraft, which he refused. Uh, the aircraft was deplaned, at which time Mr. Beckham was asked by the officers to exit the plane and did so without incident. De Villiers uh, concluded in his statement Sunday that sleeping on a plane should not be a cause for removal from a flight. If they could wake him, 
yeah. uh, when the or wake him up when the flight returned to the gate, then they could have done the same thing to ask him to put on a seatbelt. De Villiers' message read, Beckham, who seemingly alluded to the ordeal on Twitter, has a big week ahead of him as he begins his free agency tour Thursday with the Giants. Never in my life have I experienced what just happened to me. I've seen it all. Never, period, in, period, my, period, life, period. I could never make this up, Beckham wrote on his Twitter. Originally drafted by the Giants in 2014, Beckham spent five seasons in New York before being traded to the Browns in 2019. The Pro Bowl receiver spent the latter half of 2021 in Los Angeles, where he won a Super Bowl with the Rams in February. During the championship matchup against the Bengals, however, Beckham tore his ACL. He has since been uh, cleared from that injury. In addition, the Giants or to the Giants, Beckham is expected to meet with the Cowboys December 5th, as well as the Bills at some point. Now, Mally. Mm-hmm. You and I have traveled pretty extensively in our lifetimes. Yes. What's the one thing you do before you take off on a plane? Put your seatbelt on. Exactly. Now, if you and I can do it, can't Odell Beckham Jr.? You would think so. I'm surprised. Has anyone come forward with, like, video of it? You know how, like, everyone whips out their phone when there's a little bit of a commotion? Because I know it's, you know, there's a side to every story, each book, but... I mean, I know that flight attendants get a lot of grief and they have to put up with a lot of crap, Mm -hmm. but it just seems like so extreme to kick them off. But then, I don't know. I mean, rules are rules. Yeah. Now, you know, keep in mind, you know, sure, it's probably early morning and everybody's kind of tired of everybody's shit, so to speak. Right. Um, It's a Sunday morning. And... You don't want to put up with much, and maybe everybody's grouchy and owly. Um, so the flight attendant might have just not wanted to put up with, with you know, this guy's stuff, and, and he's falling asleep with a blanket over his head. No, look at right. the weirdo or whatever. Um, and let's face it, there are a minute amount of flight attendants who sometimes take advantage of the position and the fact that, you know, they have leverage. We'll put it mm-hmm. that way. Um, but still put your seatbelt on. It's, right. it's nothing. Buckle the seatbelt. Don't be a dick. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's nothing. When, when you get up in the air and the, you get the chime, you can unbuckle your seatbelt and sleep all you want. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. it, it's, you know, it, it's nothing. The seatbelt's there for a reason. If the, if you're shifting around on your way up into the sky, they don't want you to get injured. Right. That's all it is. Right. So something that was is so simple. I mean, he could have avoided all of this this headache, right? And having everyone deplane, yeah, and have everyone deplane. Um, it's it's not a it's not a trap. It's not a it's not a power play. It's not a right. way for the airlines to get you down or the man to put his his foot on your neck. It's just something to keep you safe while you take off. Mm-hmm. That's all. Yeah. No big deal. It's done and it's done, you know? Yep. I just don't get it. <laughs> um, if you hear licking noises, no, that's it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have an ice cream cone there? No. <laughs> it's Clarabelle. She got through <laughs> into my office and she won't leave me alone. She keeps licking. That's so fine. I apologize. She's like, I've been separated enough from you. <laughs> Time for attention. Well, we'll just welcome Clarabelle into the show. That's all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have Ziggy Star Pup on when when uh, when Bruiser's here. So if uh, you know if Clarabelle wants to be on the show, no big deal. Okay. So yeah. So if you're here licking, it's <laughs> I'm not doing a fetish thing. It's it's my Dalmatian. <laughs> That's no big deal. We just welcome Clarabelle into the show. We have another co-host. No big deal. Okay. All right. So hi, Clarabelle. <laughs> oh, she's wagging her tail. Oh, hi, Clarabelle. Um, our next story has to do with now. This is this is disturbing. You know, in the in the age of new technology, um, you pretty much can get anything at your fingertips at any time. And, and I got to ask you, what's the weirdest thing you've ever ordered with your phone? Oh, I know I've got something, but off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Um, weirdest thing I've ordered with my phone. 
I can't. Th- I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. So nothing too unusual. Eh. Yeah, nothing. Probably not. No, I mean, I mean, I, I order a lot of dead stuff. Yeah, but other than that, can't think of anything really strange. I order a lot of gifts for for people for like birthdays and you know. So I I'm pr- I've probably ordered something weird to <laughs> to the house and not known it. Um, but I, 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 you know, everybody does like, um, you know, like DoorDash and stuff like that. And, uh-huh. you know, so we've all had stuff come to the house, you know, and it's, it's pretty cell phones are a handy thing. Cause you can just jump on to, or even social media. Have you ever bought anything off, um, um, marketplace on Facebook? No, I haven't. No. Okay. Uh-uh. I have. It's kind of a weird experience, but I have. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't, because then I have to, I have to like talk to some stranger. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I have to <laughs> show up at their house or whatever, pick the stuff up. Cause yeah. So, so, so you haven't used like, uh, you haven't used marketplace or you haven't used, um, uh, Craigslist or you haven't used any of nope. those. Okay. Uh-uh. This next story, Mally would be your ultimate nightmare then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Like I duck when people ring my doorbell. <laughs> so I just. Do you have a ring camera? Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, This teenager, it's only 16 years old, is charged with murder after taking to Instagram for help disposing of a body. Oh. Yeah. New way of doing it. If you don't have enough real friends, just ask your virtual friends, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Right. So this was on Instagram, you said? Yeah. Yeah. This uh, this uh, friend, Joshua Cooper, uh, I shouldn't say friend, not a friend of mine, uh, but uh, this this person, Joshua Cooper, needed uh, needed some friends. Just went on the old Instagram. I wonder if people thought it was a joke. I, I maybe I don't know. Somebody took it seriously. Uh, we go to Pennsylvania where police arrested a 16 year old boy on Friday after he allegedly killed a girl and turned to Instagram for help with disposing of the body. Alarming, isn't it? Wow. That's some balls. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe is it Ben Salem or Ben Salem, Pennsylvania? I'm not quite sure. I don't spend as much time in Pennsylvania as I'd like. Mm-hmm. Uh, said 911 operators received a call from parents of a concerned party who said their daughter received an Instagram video chat from a 16-year-old acquaintance, later identified as Joshua Cooper, who said he had just killed someone. In the video, Cooper flipped the video image to show the legs of a person covered in blood before asking for help with disposing of the body. Now that's nightmare fuel. Yeah. Yeah. Police said they were advised that Cooper lived in the top of the Ridge trailer park in, I believe it's Bensalem, uh, and officers went to check the property. As officers arrived, police said a juvenile boy ran out from the back of the trailer. The officers went inside the mobile home and saw a deceased girl on the floor of the bathroom with a gunshot wound. Police said they also noticed substantial steps were taken to clean up the scene. Additional officers searched for Cooper, and a short time later, he was located and taken into custody. Cooper was charged as an adult with criminal homicide, uh, possessing instruments of crime and tampering with evidence. He was arraigned in Bucks County District Court, where Justice Stacy Wortman denied bail for the suspect and sent him to Edison Juvenile Detention Center. I'm surprised he was sent to a juvenile center. Mm-hmm. That's what surprises me about this entire thing. Uh, police encourage anyone with information about the incident to contact Detective Ryan Co- or Kolb or Cobb, I believe it's Cobb, at 215-633-3746 or Detective Sean Smith at 215-633-3687. What was he thinking? You know, that's why it's called dumb crime, stupid criminal. Right. I yeah. mean, sometimes they'll say like, you know, a, a murder might go unsolved had it not been for something stupid, you know. So I'm wondering if this guy hadn't reached out, if it would have gone unsolved. At least for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
At first, I thought you were going to say like he ordered er Uber Eats or something to help him move the body (laughs) because you're going that route. I'm like, well, did he at least get like five star? (laughs) Like the guy showed up to help move. Hey, if the Uber guy, if the Uber guy showed up and helped, yeah, you got to give him five stars and a nice tip. Oh, yeah. Five stars and a huge tip. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that this. I can't believe you'd just be so blatant as to, I, I mean, the kid's young, but right. But just to put out an open reel and say, yeah. hey, I need help with a dead body. See, if I saw that, I would have thought it was a joke. I would Like a hidden camera kind of thing, like, wow. See, I wouldn't. I, 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 I'd know he was dead serious. You huh. you can't you can't put something like that online and not be serious, right? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Bizarre. Bizarre to say the least. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, cruises. Cruises are interesting things in that they have a lot of different rules on sea that we don't have on land. Uh, one of them is that uh, some of them have. It depends on the the cruise line. They'll have rules for smoking or vaping. Either you can or you can't. And this story, Mal, uh-huh. is interesting. And that has to do with carnival cruises. And a passenger who got into a little bit of trouble for vaping. Okay. It ended up horribly because this passenger ended up in the drink. <laughs> oh, jeez. As a result, trying to hide the vaping. I'll let you know how. Okay. It's, it's, it's kind of a stretch from one to the other. Uh, the passenger who was miraculously rescued in the Gulf of Mexico 15 hours after he fell off of a Carnival cruise ship had gotten in trouble for vaping and was likely drunk when he went overboard. The 28-year-old man who hasn't been identified was with his sister at the Carnival Valors Bar at 11 p.m. Wednesday when he took a bathroom break and never came back, according to the cruise line. She only reported him missing at noon on Thursday, prompting the Cozumel, Mexico-bound vessel to retrace its path toward New Orleans and the U.S. Coast Guard to launch a search. Someone on a cargo ship alerted authorities after spotting the man, who was seen in a dramatic video being plucked from the ocean some 20 miles south of Louisiana's southwest pass, pass, with signs of hypothermia, shock, and dehydration. He told his rescuers he wasn't sure how he'd fallen overboard. Interesting. Uh, Well, he's had plenty of time to sober up. (laughs) Yes, yeah. You've been in the water for a while. Uh, Fellow passenger Whitney Gaines told the Daily Mail that she heard the man's family talking about him during breakfast the morning after he disappeared. They talked about how he kept getting in trouble for vaping in non-designated smoke areas because there's only one area where you can really go smoke. Gaines told the outlet. I think they were kind of alluding to the fact that he stepped out to go somewhere, she added, uh, adding that the family uh, believed that he had been drunk before he vanished. Uh, Gaines also told the Daily Mail that the man's sister said she had been with him at a bar. She said he was with me and then he wasn't, the passenger recounted, hearing the woman say. Uh, Gaines said... One of the ship's pools was drained, but no formal announcement was made about a missing person. Her husband, Mike Anderson, said he saw a crew member searching for a passenger and eventually heard announcements about a missing passenger. passenger. Uh, I noticed security starting to search the boat with a photo of a missing passenger in their phones, he told CNN. Uh, Pulse-pounding video captured the man being rescued by a Coast Guard MH-60 Jayhawk copter or chopper out of uh, New Orleans. Uh, We are beyond grateful that this case ended with a positive outcome. Lieutenant Seth Gross, a search and rescue mission coordinator, said in a statement to KPLC, it took a total team effort from Coast Guard watch standers, response crews, and our professional maritime partners operating in the Gulf of Mexico to locate the missing individual and get him to safety, he said. If not for the alert crew aboard the motor vessel, I believe it's Crinus. Uh, this case could have had a much more difficult ending, Gross added, referring to the passing bulk carrier. In a statement to the Daily Mail, Carnival said, We greatly appreciate the efforts of all, most especially the U.S. Coast Guard and the mariner who spotted the guest in the water. 
that long, 15 hours. Jesus. Yeah. I wonder how many people go overboard every year. I bet you there's probably more than what you think. Probably. And I think it probably goes unreported. Right. Yeah. Especially to the general public. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Carnival uh, Carnival Valor uh, was also involved in another case of a passenger going overboard in the Gulf of Mexico. In February, dramatic video captured a woman being detained on the ship shortly before she reportedly jumped overboard from her balcony during a five day cruise to Mexico with her husband. The 32 year old woman was heard screaming the name Alicia as she was being led away. How's that for weird? You know what? I think I saw, um, you know, how everyone whips out their cameras. I think it was like all over TikTok for a while where people were recording it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Jeez Louise. And you know what else I've seen a lot lately? Um, Fights. Fights breaking out on the cruise ships. Yes. Yeah. There's, uh, you know why? Um, I don't want to tag it directly to it, but they're saying it's, it's because, um, with with cruise lines getting up and running again after after COVID, a lot more of them are offering uh, free unlimited drink packages. So people are getting oh, more and more okay. intoxicated and they're they're wandering the ship. You know that and, makes sense. And uh, you know they're they're uh, getting into fights because they're they're drunk all day long. Right? Because I would think you'd be happy. Why would you want to be in a fight? But uh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, because people are are. Uh, what's the term, Mally? There's a medical term for it. Oh, yeah. Shit face to the gills. <laughs> <laughs> and wanting to rumble. That's why. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, you know, when you're in tight quarters like that, the anxiety level is pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. So people don't tend to want to rumble when they start slamming into each other. Mm. I'm just a happy drunk. Put me in a corner. I'll sit there and smile all day long. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is an unusual story. A man with a mom tattoo gets sent back, sent back to the clink. Would you care to guess why? (laughs) I, I, I have no idea. Well, it turns out that the perp battered his mother, whose name is on his chest. Oh, geez. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. We go to Florida, of course, because it could only be a Florida man who has this type of character. A Florida man who has his mother's full name tattooed on his chest has been arrested for shoving the 53-year-old woman to the ground during an argument in the family St. Petersburg residence. And this is again, Mally. It's not the first time it's happened. Ugh. Mm-hmm. 27-year-old Thomas Pinson was charged with domestic battery after an argument Tuesday evening with his mother over financial disputes and job-related drama, allegedly turning it violent. Uh, investigators charged that Pinson grabbed his mother, Carmen, and threw her to the ground, which aggravated an an existing injury on her. Uh, The attack, cops reported, occurred in the presence of Pinson's father. What the hell was his father doing? Exactly. Sounds like he was just sitting back. I guess. Uh, Pinson, who fled the residence before police arrived, was arrested early yesterday on the, the, this was last week, by the way, on the misdemeanor charge and booked into, oh wait, no, this was actually yesterday, yesterday. So yeah, he was, oh no, no, he was arrested on the 24th. He was arrested on the 24th. Uh, so he was, uh. He fled the residence before police arrived. He was arrested on the 24th on the misdemeanor charge and booked in the the, uh, Pinellas County Jail. He was later released on $5,000 bond in order to have no contact with his mother and to stay away from her home. Police and court records note that Pinson has a rose and the name Carmen Pinson tattooed on his chest. He sounds like a winner. (laughs) <laughs> Doesn't he, though? <laughs> uh, Pinson was arrested in 2017 for allegedly shoving his mother to the ground during a 3.45 a.m. confrontation in their home as well. Carmen hit her head as a result of being shoved, police reported at the time. Uh, Pinson fled the residence before police arrived. Prosecutors subsequently declined to pursue a domestic battery charge against Pinson. Uh, after his mother notified the court that she did not wish to prosecute the misdemeanor case against her son, an arrest report lists Pinson's employment as what, Mally? His employment? Yeah, where do you think he works? I'm going to say he was a correctional officer. Nope, he doesn't work anywhere. 
<laughs> oh, figures. He's got no job. Uh, Is that he, why his bail was only 5000 It should have been a lot higher. Yeah, yeah, I think that's why they went light on him. Uh, he has previously worked at the Casual Clam Restaurant in St. Petersburg. I got to ask you, what kind of food do you think they serve at the Casual Clam? <laughs> And Ooh, is it, could it be clam? <laughs> is it safe to eat or smell is what I'm wondering. Ugh. It's God, a, could you imagine the smell on him when he comes home from work? Ugh. At the casual clam. Oh, God. I don't think I would eat anything from the casual clam, to be honest with you. No, that doesn't you. sound good. That would, if, if I had not eaten in three weeks, was down a hundred pounds, and, uh, would eat would eat the ass end out of a self uh, self charging bowl. Uh, I still wouldn't eat at the casual clam. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like the Department of Health would be visiting it. <laughs> that's if they could get near the building from the smell. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, speaking of biting things off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> a, uh, we go to Rome, Georgia. And uh, we got to thank our buddy Tom for this story, uh, who evidently uh, knew something about, I don't know, the casual clam. Uh, a Rome woman has been jailed for biting another's nail off. I got to ask you, you ever been in a fight where you've bitten anything off a woman? Uh, no. Hmm. <laughs> I'm I'd happy ask. to say no. Okay. Uh, well, this woman has. It's a short story, really. So I'll make it short. 24-year-old Murray Michelle Orr was arrested this week after reports said that he, I'm sorry, it's not a woman, it's a man, uh, said that he bit the nail off of a 37-year-old woman's hand. Okay. Okay, Murray. Good on you. Uh, reports said that Orr also scratched the victim and bit the victim's hand. What the hell was he doing? Trying to eat a pedi- or manicure? Uh, the incident occurred at a location from Grady Avenue in Rome or is charged with battery. It sounds like he was hungry for calcium. That's what it sounds like. That's just the strangest thing. Yeah. Unusual. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, this story, uh, by the way, if you've got a story for us here on, on, um, on dumb crime, stupid criminals, you can send it to me, Tim at darknessradio.com. This one came to us from Bill, I believe. Uh, this uh, Bill submitted this story to us. It's about a month old, but I, I submit this to you because, uh, by the way, uh, ever since I've I've had to use power carts and things like that because of my Sharko foot, mm-hmm. I am obsessed with stories about people commandeering vehicles and committing crimes in, in stores. Okay. <laughs> or just commandeering uh, power carts and getting DWIs. Okay. <laughs> I just think it's the funniest thing ever. Um, I don't know why. I'm just tickled pink by him. A Somerville man. I think we're going to. Are we still in Georgia? We might be in Georgia. We might be in Illinois. I, no, no, no. We're in Illinois. I think Bill's from Illinois. Uh, Somerville man leads police on a chase in a stolen golf cart. You got to live a good slow chase. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Michael Stephen Amerson Jr., who's all of 26 years old, was arrested Oh, no, we are going to Georgia. In Rome, after police uh, said he Thumbs led... Thumbs in the water in Rome. I know, right? They're Randy in Rome. Uh, after police said he led them on a chase in a stolen golf cart, police said they found Amerson driving the golf cart on Lombardi Way uh, when they initiated a traffic stop. They went on to say that Amerson refused to pull over despite uh, initiating their blue lights and sirens. Well, he probably thought he was at a Walmart. Or not, I'm sorry, a, a Kmart. He's too young for Kmart. How would he yeah, know? Yeah, I don't even yeah. think they have those around anymore, do they? We used to have a Kmart on Lake Street up until about 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So, well, he might have been 16 at the time. Visited a Kmart. Thought it was special. Loved the blue light special. <laughs> Loved the bargains. Probably just thought one was chasing him. Uh, Amerson is charged with felony theft by receiving stolen property and obstruction of law enforcement. Uh and having a damn cool stolen golf cart. I don't know. I just, I'm tickled by it. Oh, I'm sorry. That wasn't the story from Bill. That was a story from Tom. <laughs> this one is the one that was sent to us from Bill. I forgot. Bill's probably listening going, this isn't what I sent you. 
<laughs> yeah, this is the one from Bill. Bill sent us the one about an Illinois man arrested after shooting and escaping on a lawn mower. Okay. Yeah. See, I got my power. <laughs> I got my power carts mixed up. You my just power got tools. So excited. I know. I'm so excited. You're Mally. My. I can't tell which end is up. Okay. So <laughs> so Tom sent us that one. Bill sends us the one about an Illinois man arrested after shooting after a shooting and then escaping on a lawnmower in a police standoff. We go to Sheridan, Illinois. That's why I was mixed up, Mal. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. I didn't mean to. There we go. So we go to Sheridan, in Illinois, where 55 year old Jeffrey L. Peak. I believe it is, or is it? No, it's Pleak, not Peak, but Pleak, uh, has been formally charged for a shooting and a police standoff that occurred about a month ago in LaSalle County. In a press release, LaSalle County Sheriff Adam Diss, how do you like that for a name, huh? Mm -hmm. It's D-I-S-S, -S, as in he disses you. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> reports that deputies were called to the area of East... Si Johnson, S.I. Johnson and North Robinson Street in Sheridan just after 7.30 a.m. on Saturday uh, for a report of a man shot in the leg. Reports came in at the same time that a suspect had shot at other individuals in the area as well. The 63-year-old man shot in the leg was the only one injured. He was transported to Valley West Hospital and then to St. Anthony's. Saint, that's how you say it in, in Illinois, by the way, Mally. Gotcha. Went to St. Ant Anthony. St. Anthony's uh, Medical Center over by there, uh, where he's in uh, stable condition. <laughs> uh, they stopped by Portillo's. They got them one of them their uh, beef and cheddars, and uh, everything was good. Uh, two vehicles were hit, by the way. No other citizens were injured. The suspect later identified as Pleak, or it could be a Plyke. I don't know. Uh, left the scene of the shooting on a riding lawnmower. He said, uh, screw this crap. I got a riding lawnmower I can get away on. And uh, returned to his residence where he barricaded himself inside. The slowest getaway ever, Mally. Oh, I'm sure. He put it in fifth gear. But he only got her up to about, I got her up to about uh, 17 to 20 miles an hour. <laughs> That's like the Seinfeld episode. Uh where oh shoot what's his name um costanza has the scooter and people are chasing <laughs> him and because it's going so slow he ends up like getting off and like doesn't he carry it like run with it yeah because <laughs> he wanted it for the bathroom right remember right. he wanted the private bathroom yep yep i love that episode by the way <laughs> i've been rewatching a lot of those lately uh it's been a while but they yeah. had some good ones they did uh, so Mr. Uh, Pleak over there by, uh, over by there took the riding lawnmower over to the residence where he barricaded himself inside, locked all the doors. <laughs> You're not getting in, Capper. Uh, LaSalle County Sheriff's deputies were assisted by the Sheridan Police Department, Kendall County Sheriff's Office, Grundy County Sheriff's Office, the Illinois State Police and State Police Crime Scene, Illinois Conservation Police, and other local police agencies to end the standoff. The donut shops were closed, Mally. Stop! <laughs> to end the standoff with Pleak and take him into custody, Multiple firearms and ammunition were recovered at Pleak's residence, by the way. Ugh. So he was a big mess. Right. I want to thank Bill for sending this in. Uh, by the way, uh, on Monday, October 24th, Pleak was charged with aggra aggravated battery with a firearm and two counts of aggravated discharge of a firearm. He's being held at the LaSalle County Jail. $3 million bond. $3 million? Yeah. So the one guy who beats up his mom is on a five thousand dollar bond. Yeah, and this guy's on a three million. Yeah, but Florida versus Illinois, it's no no uh -oh. no contest. <laughs> Florida, they have no sense. <laughs> Illinois, they they have a sense of justice. So. It's just no contest. Uh, so if you're a stupid criminal, move to Florida. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you'll get off easy. Right. Yeah. Oh, geez. But if you're in Illinois, you shoot somebody, try to get away on a riding lawnmower, <laughs> and then lock yourself in your house, you're screwed. Oh, yeah. yeah, they throw the book at you. Every every cop in the state of Illinois is coming for you at that point. <laughs> yeah, you're done. You're done, pal. Or you're done, pal. In the name of Mike Dicka and the Chicago Bears, the 1985 Super Bowl team, you're done, pal. <laughs> I was waiting for you to go, go Bears. Stop Bears. <laughs> 
Ta persa 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 tubbles 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 tubbles. <sighs> yep, you are done. Uh, is uh, would you say that the puppy's name was again? Oh, Clarabelle. Clarabelle. My Dalmatian. Yeah, your Dalmatian. You might want to uh, cover cover her ears for the story. Okay. You, it might give her ideas. <laughs> I'll I'll tell you why. You got her ears covered. Uh, right now she's licking my hand. <laughs> okay, she she might. Okay, be, now they're covered. Okay, she might be friendly now, <laughs> but for this story, a hunter accidentally is shot dead by his own dog in a freak accident. I'm just saying, I don't want to give Clarabelle ideas, right? Especially when Mr. Fox gets home. <laughs> um, a new dad tragically died after he was accidentally shot by his own dog during a hunting excursion in in Turkey over Thanksgiving weekend. Mm. Yep. Uh, the freak accident occurred when Oscar, oh my gosh, this is a name, 32-year-old Oscar Gavrikoglu, <laughs> try saying that 10 times fast, was pursuing game with his pals on the Kislin Plateau in Samson Province uh, last weekend. Uh, while the expedition went off without a hitch, disaster struck when the hunter was packing up to leave. Gavrikoglu, Gavrik Koglu, there we go, was reportedly putting his pet dog in the trunk of the car. Well, you probably should have put the dog in the driver's seat because the dog wanted to drive, and that's why he got shot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, you didn't get that joke, did you, Mel? No, I did. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, Gavrik Koglu was uh, putting, reportedly putting his pet dog in the trunk of the car, when its paw inadvertently touched the trigger of the still-loaded shotgun, evidently didn't put the safety on, yeah, causing the weapon to discharge into the sportsman at close range. The dog lover was subsequently rushed to Alakam uh, State Hospital, but was pronounced dead on arrival. Uh, his body was then transferred to the state capital of Samson uh, for an autopsy, while an investigation is underway into the details surrounding the man's death, which occurred just 10 days after he had become a father. Oh, that's sad. Oh, that is sad. Uh, it's unclear which pup was responsible for the fatal misfire. There was more than one, and no one's no one's claiming it. Mm-hmm. No one went, oh, I did it. Um, Gev, Gevra Koglu, there we go, uh, posted photos of himself with several hounds, including a recent one, where the smiling outdoorsman was holding up a string of dead birds with one hand and petting a dog with the other. Uh, again, not putting the safety on the weapon. Um, some Turkish media outlets claim that Gavra Koglu uh, was actually murdered and that the dog excuse was simply a cover-up, according to Newsflash. However, as of yet, investigators haven't found any evidence of foul play. Get it? Foul play because he was hunting birds uh -huh, on the weekend. Got it. Was turkey and <laughs> I don't know. Uh, in a similar fiasco in 2018, a New Mexico man was accidentally shot in the back by his dog while on a jackrabbit hunt. Evidently, the dog was friendly with the jackrabbit. Just saying. Again, another joke that went nowhere. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. No, it's all right. Okay, you can uncover uh, the dog's ears now. <laughs> Just try not to give puppies some ideas. Gotcha. So, uh, we move on. A Texas gas station clerk opened fire on a customer who broke a jar of salsa. Uh, it's just one gun story to another. Um, you ever been that mad at a job, Mal, that you just want to shoot the customers? Um, no. No? Mm-mm. Mm. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like someone has anger issues. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know, sometimes the customer isn't always right, Mally. Oh, I'm sure I probably was back in my college waitressing days, but yeah, oh, yeah. recently I can't think of anybody. Oh, yeah, that's true. Very true. A gas station clerk is behind bars after opening fire on a customer during a verbal altercation. You know, sometimes you can talk stuff out. Just mm -hmm. saying, yeah. And it's only a cleanup on aisle five. It's, it's <laughs> not that bad. Uh, Brianna Miranda was identified as a suspect in a shooting in Atascosita? Atascosita, I believe. Uh, Fox News reports citing the Harris County Precinct 4 Constable's Office. The 22-year-old woman uh, told the man he wasn't allowed in the store, which resulted in a verbal altercation. 
The man walked outside, but not before breaking a jar of salsa inside the store. Oh, I see where this went. Yeah. <laughs> this was uh this was a uh, uh this was a vendetta. This was more than just a yeah. You know, this was more than just a, a mistake. Break okay. a, breaking a jar of salsa. This guy broke in on purpose because she said, You can't be in the store. And he was like, Oh yeah? Boom. And broke the salsa. And she goes, You're gonna break my salsa? I'm gonna break your ass. <laughs> I feel like people are just so angry nowadays. They are, yeah, yeah. Uh, Miranda reportedly followed him outside, grabbed a gun from her car. It didn't even belong to the store, Mally. That's like she purposely, you know, I can understand maybe the heat of the moment before you make sense of what you're about to do, but to actually like travel out of the store to your car to grab a gun. Yep, then went right back into the store. When she did that, then she went back outside, confronted the man before shooting him twice. So he left the store. <laughs> so she she told him, you can't be in the store. Right. Evidently, at that point, when she walked outside to her car, he went, oh, shit, she's getting a gun. And then he went outside. <laughs> so she went out, got the gun, went back into the store. She went back outside when he went outside, confronted the man again, and then shot him twice. And then the story says it's unclear if the man suffered any injuries. How is it unclear? She shot him. Or did she just like shoot at his feet or something? I don't know. Uh, the clerk was arrested, booked on charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. She's being currently held at the Harris County Jail on $20,000 bond. Maybe she shot at him. In, okay. Yeah. Man. I know one thing. You, you mind your manners when you go to that store. Yeah. Yeah. You do what she says. Uh, what's gas at right now where, you, where you're at, Mel? Do you know? Um, you know what? I do not know because I haven't filled up in a while. I filled up this weekend for three twenty eight a gallon. That's pretty good. Yeah, it was. It, well, in Minnesota, as you know, they, they offset, uh, state of Minnesota offsets a little bit. Um, they subsidize the gas. Okay. And I think they went on a little bit of a gas tax vacation. So it's oh, that a, would be nice. Yeah. It is, and keep in mind, gas taxes are supposed to be 11% of the, it's like 11% of, at least in Minnesota, I think it is. It's 11% of the cost of a gallon of gas. Okay. I don't know that it's that nationwide. Right. Um, so... We were at 328 this past weekend when I think the national average was 366, if I remember right. Okay. Um, still pretty damn expensive. Not as expensive as it has been, but pretty damn expensive. Right. One Texas man decided uh, that was too rich for his blood. Again, we're staying in Texas for this uh, story. So he decided he was going to change the price of gas to one cent per gallon. <laughs> <laughs> How did he do that? Uh, Texas man is behind bars and after manipulating the price of fuel at a gas station, Miguel Manzano allegedly stole over 800 gallons of gas at the price of one cent per gallon. I'm about to tell you, Mally, how he did this. Yeah, because I would like to know, not that I'm going to do it, but I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, you're just curious. You're not going to do it, right, Mel? No, no, not right, at all. Right, not at all. Uh, according to the Harris County Precinct 4 Constable's Office, it all it seems like this is the only constable's office in, in, uh, in uh, Texas. It all went down on Monday, November 21st at a gas station at the 26600 block of, is it Keekendall Road in Tomble? Uh, police were called to the scene for reports of a man using a device to manipulate the price of gasoline. Deputies with uh, Constable Mark Herman's office said the man had a remote in his pocket that was used to keep the pump from registering the proper amount of fuel taken from the pump. Interesting. Mm -hmm. He was arrested and then booked into the Harris County Jail on charges of unlawful use of criminal instrument or mechanical security device. Manzano is also facing other federal charges for prosecution. According to police, his bond was set at $25,000. Hmm. 
so this remote evidently blocks one of the electrical signals that keeps you from registering it on the pump. Okay. Huh. I'm impressed. I, my brain just doesn't work like that to be like, oh, let's create something that's going to change the, you know, the electrical whatever to get gas at a penny. I'll, I'll give him this. It's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. It's impressive. Got two stories left here on Dumb Crime, Stupid Criminals for today. Uh, Mel, as you know, Thanksgiving is gone. Christmas is on the way. Um are any holiday parades or any any Christmas parades in your area after, after um, We already had ours. Did you? Yep. Why not already had theirs on the, it was like the 19th. We have your Christmas tree lighting ceremony on the 18th, and then the parade was the next day. Really? Uh-huh. Jeez, we just had the Hinoka Halloween parade. We're not quite in the uh, holiday. We're, well, I, sh I shouldn't put it that way. Over at CHS Field in St. Paul, Mm -hmm. They've got this, um, instead of, you know how they had the St. Paul Winter Car Carnival, a of a lot of it for the month, and it's called Glow. And and now they put okay. the ice sculptures in CHS Field uh, where the Saints play. And mm -hmm. it's beautiful. So not only do you have uh, ice castles, but you've got different sculptures and lights and stuff like that. And it all takes place down on the actual field where the Saints play. Um. But, uh, but yeah, now we'll start to have like the holodazzle parade and all that other stuff, um, and celebrate the, the winter season. Um, up in Canada, I know it's your favorite place to, to celebrate the holidays, <laughs> Mally. So I had to pull this story for you. I still have not been there yet. I know you're, you're trying to send satellites down on them. I've, I've heard, um, <laughs> I figured I'd, I'd read this story to you because Canada evidently is self-destructing from within. I figured this would make you happy. Okay. <laughs> um, an officer in Victoria uh, was injured when he was trying to arrest a suspect at a Santa Claus parade. Evidently, they're breaking out into fights in Canada at Santa Claus parades. Who knew? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a feeling it has to do with alcohol. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah. Uh, we go to... The this just happened on the 27th. A Victoria police officer was injured while trying to arrest a man at a Santa Claus parade on Saturday. Uh, authorities say officers were marching in the Peninsula Co-op Santa Claus parade and handing out candy canes. Yeah, nothing is more innocent than police officers handing out candy canes to kids, right? Mm -hmm. But some jackass has got to drink enough Molson to get into a fight. <laughs> <laughs> At the Santa Claus Parade. Uh, so uh, officers are marching in the Peninsula Co-op Santa Claus Parade and handing out candy canes uh, when they were alerted to a disturbance. A parade spectator approached members of the Vic PD contingent to report that a man had assaulted a member of the crowd and was walking through the crowd trying to instigate additional fights. A statement uh. from the department said, officers approached the man and escorted him away from the parade route in an effort to effect a safe arrest in a safe location away from bystanders and children in the area. When officers moved to arrest the man, he began a fight with them. So the guy's fighting the cops at the Santa Claus parade. Right. Yeah. That's that's Poor kids. Yeah. Merry Christmas. I know. Uh, the man was ultimately taken into custody, uh, but an officer was injured in the course of the arrest. Police said no other injuries were reported. They're asking for information or video of the incident, maybe just for pride's sake. I don't know. Um, and there, you've been asked to call 250-995-7654 if you have any information on the Victoria PD beating the crap out of the uh, alcoholic at the Saint Cla or Santa Claus Parade. Uh, up there this past weekend someone's always got to ruin it that's right there's always got to be one yep and finally mel it's been a tradition uh lately on uh, dumb crime stupid criminals to uh do a not safe for work uh story to end dumb crime stupid criminals <laughs> so we'll give you a moment uh, if you want to cover puppies ears for this i understand that too um to, you know, get the kids away from the listening device or if you're at work to kind of turn it down or put your headphones in at this point. Uh, we've got a particularly saucy story to end today's Dumb Crime Stupid Criminals. Um, Mal, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, lately uh, people have switched from beating each other with food 
uh, to beating each other with sex toys. I don't know why oh, this geez. is. Um, <laughs> our nation has gone nuts, uh, mm-hmm. especially men and women. I, they, I don't know why they feel like they need to put their hands on each other, but now it's not just their hands. It's, it's you know, different sex toys. <laughs> well, some of those can cause a concussion. Like what? What are you, what are you have in the bedroom that causes a concussion when you hit? I personally don't have it, but oh, I've been okay. to those little parties. Oh, oh, oh yeah. The parties. Yeah. Uh, what is it like the giant black fist that uh, John Zaffis inherited at uh, <laughs> one year? At, no, uh, but you know, when the, the girls, they have like those little parties where you can buy things and whatever and everyone uh-huh. giggles and, you know, drinks wine and whatever. And they have those things with suction cups and those things are big. They are. I don't have we I think we've told this story on the air before about uh, the gift that John Zaffis inherited once. Should we tell I that story real quick? Yeah, go for it. Let's do that before we get Because I don't this. think I've heard the story. No, I don't think so. Oh, my gosh. OK, Stacy Jones, the uh, the paranormal cop. Yes. Um, brilliant investigator. She was actually uh, featured on uh, the A Haunting series on uh, I believe it's on Tribal Channel. Um. She's good friends with John Zaffis, who is the nephew of uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren, and also a damn good demonologist in his in his own right. And he's earned the name the Godfather of the Paranormal and a good good friend of this program. A True Crime Tuesday and Darkness Radio. Uh, so we were all at uh, Phenomenology uh, Paranormal um, Convention, and uh, John was coming back from dinner, and Stacy said, "I want to pull a prank on John." Uh, can you and ask me if I could help her out with it? I said, sure, I'd love to. <laughs> I'm always up for a good prank. Mm-hmm. She goes, I need someone to help me with this because I and, and just someone he wouldn't suspect. I said, well, what do you got, Stace? She said, well, on our way here, and this is back when she lived in Syracuse, New York. She said, on the way here, we stopped off at a sex shop and we bought this giant black rubber fist. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> She goes, I'm going to wrap it in a garbage bag and I need somebody who's really, really convincing to run it out to him as he's pulling in because he was riding with a group of people in a, in a van. They were all going to dinner. They were all coming back from dinner. And just as he steps out from the, and this is all her idea, just as he steps out from this van, he, you know, he likes to have his coffee and a cigarette. Right. After he gets out from dinner, just to relax right out in front of the hotel. And then he goes up either to go talk with people or he's going to go up to his room one or the other just catch him as he's getting out of the van just completely off guard hand him this fist this giant black fist (laughs) and in the garbage bag wrapped up tight in this garbage bag it was even taped down and everything Uh and convince him that it's a possessed thing that they have don't oh, describe boy. what it is or anything just uh-huh. that it's this thing that's been handed down to him from generation to generation that it does evil things in the house it throws <laughs> things around that it's been injuring family members right you just can't ha- have it anymore right you got to get rid of it you got to get it out of your sight please john just take it with you please i can't have it anymore shove it into his arms and run off and run back into the hotel uh-huh okay and then she asked me, do you think you can find somebody? I said, sure, I'll find somebody for you. I didn't know who I was going to find. I had no idea. Uh, so I'm walking around the hotel, and I'm talking to one of the paranormal groups. And one of the girls in the paranormal group, one of the ladies, says, oh, I do theater. I said, you do? She goes, yeah, I could do it. I said, would you? And I smile. She goes, I would <laughs> love to. I was like, perfect. I said, now, does John know you at all? She goes, he wouldn't know me from, from anybody. I'm right. Like, great, great. So I said, okay, here's the deal. John's going to be back in about half an hour. And I've got the fist, and it's wrapped up in this garbage bag, black garbage bag. You can't see through it. It's taped down really well. And I, you know, basically give her, you know, the, the bullet points, and she's got to come up with the script. Mm-hmm. So Stacy and I go up to her her paranormal groups, one of their, one of their rooms, which is right on the third floor, right above where they come in, you know, the entrance of the, the hotel. We've yeah. got the windows open. We've got the, the lights all off. We can hear everything going on into the entry of the hotel. <clears throat> and John gets out of the van. He's like, oh, yeah, that was a good meal, blah, 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 blah. And he starts to fire up his smoke. He's got his coffee in his hand. Here she comes, running out of the hotel. John, John, John. 
He's like, yeah, what's going on? John, I got to talk to you. I got to talk to you. Oh, yeah, well, I'll talk to you in just a bit. I'm just going to have a smoke here, and I'm going to have my coffee and my coffee, you know. And I'm mm-hmm. going to have my coffee, my cigarette, and, you know, I'll come in. I'll talk to you in a minute. No, I got to talk to you here, John. I got to talk to you here. And people are starting to gather, but they see how fr- frantic she is. And the theater training kicks in. And uh-huh. Mally, this was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. It was so funny. And she goes, John, I have this thing. I got to give it to you. It's been in my family for generations. And (laughs) I can't tell you exactly what it is. I want you to open it when you're by yourself. Just open this when you're by yourself. And he goes, okay, John, this is haunted. I think there's a demon in this. It's got to be a demon. Right. I, I got this three years ago when my grandmother died. And, and let's just put it this way. Things are being thrown off my walls, pictures are being thrown off my walls, tea sets are being are flying across the room out of cabinets, and she is laying it on thick. Right. I mean, just thick. And she's looking scared. There had to be tears coming out of her eyes. It sounded like she was crying. And she goes, John, I can't take it anymore. My family can't take it anymore. Please, just please take this. And she shoves it so hard into his arms, he nearly falls over. And she kind of sobs and runs into the lobby. And John looks at this thing. It's, he's looking into his arms like, what the hell is this? Right. And he puts it on the hood of the van. He sets his coffee down. He puts a cigarette in his mouth. And he unwraps it. And he pulls it out. And you just see this big floppy black rubber fist <laughs> and just <laughs> flopping around in his, in his arms. And he goes, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Jones, where are you? (laughs) And she starts laughing. And uh, from where we are on the third floor, and he looks up at the room. It was just hysterical. Just the greatest prank ever. I say that to lead into this story. So now you've had enough time to turn your devices down. Or, you know, not get yourself in trouble with the kids. Right. A man's been busted for striking his girlfriend with a sex toy during a motel argument. (laughs) (laughs) But of course he has. I mean, I shouldn't be laughing that she she's been hit. (laughs) But could you imagine telling the doctor (laughs) with what? Right. What you've been hit with. And the headline actually says dill don't. (laughs) Nice. Uh, During an argument of all days, Mally, early Thanksgiving morning. Early Thanksgiving morning. And of course, it's in Florida. Oh, of course. It's the trifecta. A uh, Florida man threw a sex toy at his girlfriend, leaving the woman with a bruise on her torso. This according to cops who noted that they did not confiscate the weapon used in the alleged domestic battery because it may get used later. Oh, <laughs> just saying. Uh, investigators say that 45 year old Christopher Paquito and the 33-year-old victim were inside a room at the Sun Island Motel in St. Petersburg around 4.40 a.m. when a verbal argument turned violent. According to an arrest affidavit, Paquito was packing his suitcase to leave the room when he began throwing the victim's items out of the luggage. Uh, During the process, the woman told police, Paquito hit her with a sex toy on her torso, leaving a bruise. Now, when questioned by cops, Paquito reportedly admitted to throwing items, but does not recall exactly what items. Come on, I I think he has an idea. Right. Yeah. Uh, The sex toy in question is not further described in the court affidavit uh, because they have couth in class in the court. (laughs) Yeah. The 6'2", 300-pound Paquito, who cops say was under the influence of alcohol, shock of all shocks at 4.40 a.m., right, was arrested for domestic battery. He bonded out of jail Friday after posting how much, Mally, for hitting with a it dildo. Is Florida, right? Yes, it is. It I'm going to say a thousand. You are you are correct. <laughs> wow. What do I, I win? A dildo? <laughs> yes, yes. You you win the dildo that was used in the striking. Um, <laughs> after posting a thousand dollars bond in the misdemeanor case. Uh, A judge has ordered him to have no contact with the victim, especially hitting with sex toys. Uh, Paquito, a professional engineer, (laughs) I find that hard to believe, lives in Fort Myers, a city about 110 miles south of St. Petersburg. So there you go. (laughs) Unbelievable, huh? Yep. 
Takes all kinds. Takes all kinds. So that's it. That's it for uh, dumb crimes and stupid criminals. So Mal, tell us what you got going on. Uh, well, boring. Actually, uh, nothing right now. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> you put me on the spot. I don't have anything going on. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so tell us now. The last time we talked to you, you were you were talking about updating the Paranormal Girl website. Oh yes. Um, I have updated. I've been working on it for the past week. Okay. And probably in the next week, I'm going to drop a uh, Paranormal Girl uh, shirt. Oh, good. Okay. So, yeah, I've got them printed. I just have to take the photos and do the description and all that good stuff. So, I will actually have something up for sale on the website, which I haven't had in a very long time. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Nice. So, look for that. Again, the website is? Paranormalgirl.com. All right, we'll have a we'll have a link to it on uh, darknessradioshow.com. Um, we're working on getting uh, all the host bios up and, and running. I got something funky going on with my pod page, so I got to figure out how to get our all of our bios up there and get a link directly to uh, to Mally's um, site there for you as well. But paranormalgirl.com, make sure you check out uh, Mally's uh, website. It's it's really cool. So, uh, well, thank you. Yes, <laughs> I wish absolutely. I had something more exciting, but I don't. <laughs> no, no, no. That, that is exciting. That is exciting that you have that new shirt out there. I know a lot of people, a lot of women actually love, and a lot of guys too, because you've got the zombie love monkey stuff out yes. there for the guys. Mm-hmm. Um, so guys, check out the website as well too. It's not just for women. Right. Um, w- Mally doesn't discriminate like that. No. Um, so, uh, so guys, gals, check out paranormalgirl.com. And uh, you can link to zombie love monkey from there too as well, right? Um, I believe so. So I've got to get some new designs for that as well. Okay. I've just kind of put everything on the back burner for a while. Life, you know, gets in the way, but. It does that. It does that. Yeah. Um, so, so check that out. And in the meantime, tomorrow on the program on Darkness Radio is Supernatural News. And we get a twofer here, don't we, Mally? Yeah. That's right. We got Mally coming back tomorrow. Uh, we've got some of the strange, the supernatural, and the silly coming up tomorrow on Darkness Radio. So that's all coming up tomorrow. And uh, we'll have a good time tomorrow as well. So we look forward to that. For Mally Fox, I'm Tim Dennis. Join us tomorrow right here on the program uh, for more of that. I want to just mention real quick before we go uh, today, uh, unfortunately, we broke the news on our social media over the weekend of the passing of author, researcher, and journalist Linda Godfrey. Uh, We extend uh, our prayers, our thoughts, and uh, sincere condolences to her friends and family uh, Linda has been on our program multiple times over the years. I posted a link to one of our early shows with her about the American werewolf. Um, uh, it, it, it was very sad to, uh, to learn of her passing. Uh, she died from complications of Alzheimer's. Uh, Jay Bachochin, who is out of Wisconsin, uh, was, uh, was one of her students. And, um, Jay has some, if you go to his uh, his social media, has some great things uh, to not only say about her, but he's got some video of Linda and got some interesting perspective on Linda as well. Uh, so check him out as well on social media for, for more insight and perspective about Linda's life. Uh, and we may have Jay on to talk a little bit about Linda uh, coming up in the next week. We've got Bill Bean on on Wednesday. Um, but I may book him next week to talk a little bit about Linda. So, mm-hmm. uh, But in the meantime, tomorrow, Supernatural News with Mally Fox. This is Tim Dennis. We'll see you tomorrow for the best in paranormal po- podcasting, Darkness Radio. Thanks for joining us for the best in true crime podcasting. This has been True Crime Tuesday.